Good morning on this damp Monday. Here in New York, everyone's a critic. And Restaurant Week, kicking off today and running through February 9th, offers amateur food critics their biannual chance to evaluate three course lunches, $29, or dinners, $42. At hundreds of restaurants across the city. But to be a professional restaurant reviewer, you need more than a reservation and a hot take on udon noodles. The job demands a hearty appetite, an iron stomach, and a touch of spacecraft to avoid fawning treatment from staff and chefs. The New Yorker has a new food critic, Hannah Goldfield. We asked her and Pete Wells the New York Times' restaurant critic, for the inside scoop on writing about food for a living. Their responses are lightly condensed. How do you choose what to order? Mr. Wells resists the cliché of foodie insiderism to order the craziest thing on the menu. He lets his guests choose many of the plates, I'm really interested in the item in the menu that's written in a way that it sings out to people. Ms. Goldfield, when I go to a restaurant for the first time I will often start with what grabs my eye as being unusual. I also try to put myself in the head of any other diner, is there something that's just going to be a crowd pleaser? What's it like going out to dinner with you, Mr. Wells, it can be like a job. I tell you what to do, and I may end up eating at strange hours in weird corners of the city. It doesn't work out that well to have people who think they're just going out for fun. Ms. Goldfield, I really need to focus on the food and on my surroundings. Sometimes I'll just check out of the conversation, which can drive people crazy. You make reservations under different names. Does that matter? When anyone can Google you and see what you look like, Mr. Wells, the real merit in anonymous reviewing is showing up as a regular civilian even if they recognize you at the door, so that you're not telegraphing that you expect to be treated as a representative of the newspaper. Ms. Goldfield, I think the idea of special treatment for a critic is, to some degree, a thing of the past. Service has just gotten better across the board. Part of that is an emphasis on hospitality and part is also symptomatic of the Yelp era. What makes a good meal, Mr. Wells, the most satisfying meals that I have are the ones that the chef isn't trying to make a huge impression but is just trying to make the food really good. You would think that making the food really good is the baseline, but beyond that a lot of ego and flag planting can creep in and it's not always to the benefit of the diner. Ms. Goldfield, really good, really unpretentious cooking. I'm averse to preciousness. I like to feel like what I'm eating looks like food and marries flavors in a thoughtful rather than showy way. Current favorite food, Mr. Wells, things with crust, like tarts and savory pies. Ms. Goldfield, I love mapo tofu, but there's almost nothing I find so satisfying as really good bread and butter. Here's what else is happening by the time you're done commuting today, a meal at a cozy, candlelit restaurant will really hit the spot. It could rain throughout the day and we're not expecting much in the way of sun. The high is 49. The gloomy skies continue tomorrow when the rain really picks up. State and federal officials reached a deal to reopen the Statue of Liberty, a day after the federal government shutdown forced it to close. New York Times MTA officials reportedly pressured staff members to inflate the number of subway delays that could be attributed to power issues, which led Gov. Andrew M. Cuomo to blame Con Edison for service failures. New York Times The Sunshine Cinema has closed. The cultural mainstay on the Lower East Side was sold last year to New York City developers with plans to demolish it. 
New York Times Joseph Percoco, a close advisor to Governor Cuomo who is accused of taking bribes in return for official actions that helped companies receive hundreds of millions of dollars in state contracts, will stand trial. New York Times workers known as violence interrupters identify and escalate social media conflicts before they erupt into violence on the street. New York Times A recent protest and counter-protest of congestion pricing offered a preview of what is likely to be an intense debate over the plan to ease gridlock and raise funds to help the subway system. New York Times The typical New Jersey resident in 2018 is a 39-year-old woman of Italian descent. She lives in Middlesex County and makes about $38,000 a year, according to a new survey. NJ.com A Brooklyn lawmaker wants to toughen New York's drunken driving laws by lowering the state's legal blood alcohol limit for drinking and driving. CBS New York A 26-year-old Harlem resident, Genesis Suero, was crowned Miss New York 2018 after beating out a group of 133 contestants. New York Post Today's Metropolitan Diary, only trying to help for a global look at what's happening, see your morning briefing the new exhibition Identity collects fiber artworks that explore imagery of the African diaspora at the Arsenal Gallery in Central Park 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Free the world's top-ranked squash players compete at the JP. Morgan Tournament of Champions in Grand Central Terminal. Various times beginning at 11 a.m. $10 a screening of Crossing Delancey at the Seward Park Library in Lower Manhattan. 6.15 p.m. Free the playwrights Alicia Harris and Jackie Sibley's Drury discuss their upcoming productions with the playwright Brandon Jacobs Jenkins at the Schomburg Center in Harlem. 6.30 p.m. Free Islanders at Coyotes, 9 p.m. Message Plus. Devils host Red Wings, 7 p.m. Message. Dot alternate side parking remains in effect until February 12. For more events, see the New York Times's Arts and Entertainment Guide. Good news for city cyclists. Manhattan's first protected crosstown bike lanes will be installed this year. The lanes nestled between the sidewalk curb and a row of cars, will run along 26th and 29th streets. The city is also planning other cross-town bike lanes, after cycling fatalities increased from 18 to 23 last year. New York currently has 1,180 miles of bike lanes, with more on the way. But not everyone is happy with the increase. Some residents have complained about losing parking spaces to lanes and point out bicyclists' bad behavior like riding in the wrong direction and blowing red lights and have pushed back against additional lanes. We'd like to know what you think about bike lanes in your neighborhood. Would you like to see more or fewer? Why? Let us know in the comments or send an email at newyorktoday at newyorktimes.com. Please include your full name, age, and the neighborhood or city in which you live. We may include your response in an upcoming New York Today column. New York Today is a morning roundup that is published weekdays at 6 a.m. If you don't get it in your inbox already, you can sign up to receive it by email here. For updates throughout the day, like us on Facebook. What would you like to see here to start your day? Post a comment, email us at New York Today at New York Times.com, or reach us via Twitter using hashtag NYToday. Follow the New York Today columnists, Alexandra Levine and Jonathan Wolf. On Twitter. You can find the latest New York Today at NewYorkToday.com.